Hey guys, welcome back. In case you're looking for an affordable way to get started with, uh, you know, learning Python, I mean, if you don't have a laptop or something, then I hope you watched my previous tutorial about Raspberry Pi. Now, whether you're using Raspberry Pi or Windows or Mac or any, you know, uh, uh, any other Linux system, uh, what I'm about to uh, talk about applies to any of those. Okay, so we're going to use Google Colab to get started with Python and then actually have a quick look at one of the examples I've done in one of my previous uh, videos. In fact, the one before the last one where we looked at uh, binary classification. Okay, so let's uh, actually open that in Google Colab and use a GPU. Now, uh, Google does an amazing job. I mean, it's, it's free. You get decent storage and you get uh, the specific size of GPU and uh, resources Google never tells you because they scale it based on number of people that um, you are using the platform, number of resources that are occupied at that time. So it's very difficult for Google to allocate specific amount of resources for you. But uh, I have, uh, so far, I, I got GPU whenever I wanted and it worked great, okay? So let's jump in. Step number one, sign up for your own Google account, okay? I recommend separating your personal and your learning Google accounts, which is what I did. I have my own personal account and this is my Python for Microscopist Google account. So let's go ahead and type collab.research.google.com, okay? So this takes you to a page where in fact, it shows what is collaboratory. So this is your getting started page, okay? So if it's the first time, that's what you would see. Now you can go ahead and start a new notebook. Now one difference between Google Colab and the way I've been teaching for the past few uh, uh, tutorials, I like to use Spider IDE because in Spider IDE, I can do my code. My code is in the code form and on the top right hand side, I have my variable explorer where I can see all the variables at a time. Now with uh, Google Colab, it uses uh, uh, Python notebooks, okay? It's like Jupyter notebooks basically, where it's, 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 it's amazing for teaching, but I do not like for my regular work uh, because to look at variables, for example, I need to uh, add print statements. Uh, you know, uh, again, it's it's it's. I shouldn't I shouldn't complain because Google is giving all of this for free, and I'm here. I'm talking about uh, the limitations of it. I mean, these are minor things. For what they give out for free, I shouldn't be complaining at all. Okay, so let's jump in. So first of all, let's go ahead and click on New Notebook, and this is like a new file in your Spider IDE. Okay, so it opens up a new notebook. Again, the two things. It's very intuitive, so I don't want to make this a Jupyter Notebook tutorial, but there are two things. One, you can create a cell that uh, contains code or you can create a cell that contains text. This is why it makes it uh, a great tool for teaching purposes. So for example, I can just do A equals to three and then I add a cell. This is text, okay? So I just do some text without the hashtag or anything. So it knows that this is text and then I can add another line for uh, code and I can just say, okay, print A. I can run line by line. I can run the entire thing. It's uh, again, so uh, Jupyter notebooks are, I mean, notebooks in general are amazing uh, for teaching purposes or breaking your code down and running one line at a time. So it's, it, it works great. So now it's your personal choice whether you would like to use this or not. But when you're on Google Colab, you don't have a choice. Okay, now this part, of course, you can figure it out. Now, how, when we're talking about deep learning or image processing, we often have some files and we are importing the files and we are trying to do something with them. So those can be actually stored on your Google Drive. So let's actually go to Google Drive and see what's going on in our Google Drive, okay? So here, by default, any notebook that you actually create in Google Colab is placed into your Google Drive. You see the getting started. I actually created like Colab notebooks and uh, you can place your notebooks into the, your Colab notebooks. As you can see, I have one called Malaria Binary Classification, which is what we'll open in a minute. But one small step before we go there. I, by the way, I also created another folder called Data within that uh, and then I dumped uh, an image called test underscore image dot JPEG. On your local drive, you have like your folders and you say, okay, uh, my image is uh, at this location and then you go ahead and import it and all, all that stuff. So this tutorial is about, okay, how do you do handle that, you know, on uh, Google Colab? 
Okay, so uh, within this data folder, I have another folder called cell images. And in cell images, I have two folders, parasitized and uninfected. Again, please watch my uh, video number, I guess 144, where I talked about binary uh, classification. So here I have a whole bunch of parasitized images and uh, I can go back and then uh, similarly I have uninfected images okay so this is all on my drive now let's jump back into Google uh, uh, Colab and let's add a code line okay and then uh, I have these three lines that I've written in my notebook so let me go ahead and paste those three again uh, a quick explanation again in spider IDE or PyCharm or whatever you use you do not use this percent matlab uh, matplotlib inline you just do from matplotlib import pyplot as plt right I mean so we can see this because inline is already defined as part of your IDE so in Jupyter notebooks you have to type this line to see the images or plots or whatever the output is from matplotlib in line meaning in in this document itself which we'll see in a minute okay so uh, there you go and now let's go ahead and uh, we are, use scikit image to read an image okay so again let's execute this and uh, where is our image well our image is located for example in our data folder and if you don't know any better one way you could try is okay go ahead and get shareable link it generates a link copy the link and now you come back here and now you can basically say our oh, my image is equals to io dot imread right and then go ahead and paste it i bet it's going to we should have started a new code line but that's okay it gives a bunch i mean it gives an error saying that okay i cannot find it right so this is where mounting your drive it used to be an issue uh, even six months ago I believe but now Google made it very easy for us to connect our notebooks with our drive so the way you do that is just go to uh, on the left hand side yeah click on that folder button and here you see the sample data uh, this is basically uh, uh, you know the data that I have accessible right now but I need data that's available uh, you know that's on my Google Drive so I need to mount that drive here so let me go ahead and mount it and connect to Google Drive now we should see we should see the drive mounted here okay so there is my drive and my drive this makes it easy now it's almost Windows Mac Linux like yeah so Colab notebooks is the folder we created there and within there I created a folder called data and here this is my image I'd like to open so here I can just go ahead and say okay uh, copy the path and hopefully this should work now so let's go ahead and paste it here and go ahead and run this line no errors well okay so let's say uh, let's add a text line for the fun of it view image okay and then let's add code and you know how to view an image right plt.imshow and uh, we called it img let's go ahead and view the image there you go this is how it is i hope you learned something new now yeah because the first time uh, if you tried Google Colab even six months ago, this wasn't this easy. So I hope uh, now you see where we are getting at. Okay, so now let me open a notebook that, oh, by the way, you can change the notebook name right there. Read an image. Okay, oh, sorry, underscore. Read an image and I can go ahead and save it. There should be saved somewhere. Okay, or control save. Now let me go back to my Google Drive and go back to my collab notebooks and uh, we should see read an image right there okay now i already copied and pasted which took quite a while because apparently there is no easy way of importing .py or python files directly into uh into collab if any of you know how to do that please post that in comments so others can benefit okay but uh, anyway i i typed everything here uh, including my notes so let me go ahead and open it when you double click here it opens this as a as an image because Google Drive doesn't know any better but luckily up here it says open with Google Colab uh, Collaboratory so let's click on that and it should open it in uh, oh well one important thing I completely forgot to mention now uh, when you let's go to read an image 
Oh, we already have it over there. Read an image, right? Now, if I plan on actually working on, uh, you know, using TensorFlow like GPU or even TPU, then this is where you can change. Go to runtime, okay? And go to, if I can find it, change runtime type, okay? And then from hardware accelerator, select GPU. If you know how to use TPU, go ahead and select TPU, okay? So I have never experimented with TPU, maybe I should, but uh, go ahead and select GPU. For this, you do not, oh, sorry. For this, obviously reading an image, you don't need that. Now, if I go to my malaria binary classification notebook here, if I go to my runtime, change runtime type, you see the GPU is pre-selected because I selected it, okay? It remembers uh, the notebook. Okay, I've already executed this one, so you don't have to see me, you know, go through every line. You already, I assume, watched my previous video on binary classification, so this video is not about this code, but about, you know, how to use Google Colab. So there you go. So on the left-hand side, when I click on this folder, uh, connecting to a runtime, sorry, when I click on this uh, folder, Again, it's uh, it remembers that the last time I mounted my Google Drive, so it took a second, but eventually it showed my drive up here, okay? For a given notebook, you have to mount it. If, you, if I created a new notebook, you have to mount the drive again, okay? Because you may not need the drive all the time. Okay, in this case, we mounted the drive, and this is the same code uh, as last time. Now, to test the GPU, just copy and paste this code, I believe, I believe uh, if you Google search for Google Colab and then GPU, you'll find this somewhere. But go ahead and uh, type this code. All it's trying to do is, okay, where is my GPU device? This is exactly the same thing you do if you have a local GPU, yeah? And it says GPU device is located right there. That means, okay, I have a GPU right now. By the way, on the top right, you can actually look at the resources. How many resources uh, do you have right now? And if the GPU is being used, it kind of tells you the information right there. Okay, now let's keep moving on. Now, where is my image directory? Again, this is where I actually went to my drive and Colab notebooks and uh, data and my cell images. And I just got, well, even, uh, yeah, cell images, right? So copy the path. That's exactly what I copied here. Now, once I have the image directory, the rest of the code is exactly the same as last time. Okay, my uh, uh, parasitized images are in a subfolder called parasitized inside my image directory and so on. Again, there are many ways of reading files, right? So this is how I chose to read these files here. So my data set, this is, this is here. Now I run these lines. In Spider, you see that, okay, my data set size is 1000 by 150 by 150 by three on the right-hand side, top right-hand side. Here, I have to include print statements. That's the only pain that we go through for all this free stuff that Google is giving, okay? And my label size. So keep adding these print statements to make sure it's like a sanity check, okay? And uh, everything else is the same. And uh, normally, when I actually uh, train a model, I put my verbose equals to one, which means print the state, I mean, uh, the status on the screen. Now on Jupyter Notebooks, if you do that, then you have like, uh, how many epochs? 1000 lines and I hate that, so I changed it to zero, okay? So that's pretty much it. And it saves this model.h5, it saves it to your, uh, you know, to, to your directory, so you can see that file. You can load that, and of course I'm doing some print uh, uh, statements right here using mat, uh, matplotlib. You can see those, not a great, I mean, you can see some of these, you know, <laughs> jumps uh, in, in my validation accuracy and training accuracy, but eventually it converged, that's great. And uh, again, this is, this is very similar to what we have done in the binary classification uh, video, 143, 144-ish and so on. And then I printed the ROC curve and area under the curve, 95%, well, everything else is the same. All of this accelerated by GPU. Experiment with TPU. I never did that. Go ahead and experiment. And if you, if you have more knowledge on TPUs, please post it in, uh, in, in your comments so others can learn from your experience. Okay, so the summary of these two videos, the last and this video, with about $50 or 5,000 to 7,000 rupees, you can get started with your basic Python 
and by using your uh, Google Colab, now you have access to uh, GPU, very nice resources, so nothing stops you from learning you know, these deep learning. So thank you very much. And again, in the next tutorial, let's uh, learn about a different topic.